Hey there, everyone. We are going to jump right into something a little bit different this week. I wanted to start a series on how to hack web applications. And there's a really awesome, what you call a broken web app uh, that you can use to test your hacking skills uh, from the OWASP organization. It's called OWASP Juice Shop. And the code is freely available on GitHub. If you just search for uh, OWASP Juice Shop, uh, you'll come to this page here on GitHub uh, from uh, B. McKinnich. And uh, it has all the raw source code in here. But most importantly, it's super easy to deploy. You, you could uh, run it uh, locally on your machine using Node.js. You can uh, run it locally using Docker. Or you can do what I prefer to do, which is uh, follow this one-click deploy to Heroku, uh, which is free, mind you. It's uh, super easy. It takes about two minutes to uh, spin up and deploy out to Heroku. So it's, uh, it's pretty fast, and then it's up and running, and you can uh, have your way with it. Uh, so I've already done that, but I wanted to introduce uh, OWASP Juice Shop here in GitHub first before uh, jumping on over to the application. So there's a lot of information here in the GitHub README. Um, you can see here, you know, the deploy to Heroku. We can see if you want to run Node.js, uh, run Docker, et cetera, and so forth. Um, but one of the other really cool things that you can do is set up something like a capture the flag competition using a wasp juice shop. You see that down here with a capture the flag extension. Most importantly, the thing that any of you out here watching who want to get into hacking web applications or really dig into the examples themselves, uh, there's a resource called owning a wasp juice shop which links out to a uh, PDF, uh, has all of the answers for uh, every vulnerability that exists in Juice Shop, as well as how to solve it. Uh, I'm not going to dig into that too much here in today's video. We may revisit that in a future video, but just know that it exists because as you get into the process of hacking the Juice Shop application, inevitably you're going to run into something that you can't quite figure out how to solve and the answers are going to be out there for you so don't feel like this is just some open-ended quest there are resources to help you close the loop fill out any of those knowledge gaps that you might have so without further ado let's jump right into hacking OWASP juice shop so as I mentioned a moment ago I have already deployed my version of juice shop to Heroku and I have that uh, at this URL here, thatconf-test.herokuapp.com. So you know it's in fact being served from Heroku. And for those of you who may be new to the idea of hacking a web application, especially a web application built using modern web technology, it can be difficult to figure out where to start. So I wanted to give some sense of where I would start as somebody who builds web applications professionally, somebody who hacks web applications professionally. I wanted to share some, some knowledge that I have because my background as a software engineer and specifically a web developer, I think gives me a lot of intrinsic knowledge about how these applications work that perhaps other people who come from more of a networking background or uh, traditional uh, penetration testing background, web applications can be a bit of a mystery, especially because the world of web applications, JavaScript specifically, changes so frequently, changes so quickly, it's impossible to keep up. But there are some key things that you'll want to keep your eyes on as you look at modern web applications and that's what we're going to dive into right now so as a penetration tester the very first thing i'm going to do when i look at an application 
Again, we just pulled up the home page for Juice Shop. I haven't begun clicking around. I haven't even set up uh, tools like Burp Suite to uh, help me uh, track the pages that, that belong here. If I'm just interested in learning about the application and what technology underpins that application so I can begin some very rudimentary reconnaissance of this application. First thing I'm going to notice is just simply looking up at the URL. And I realize that this might be a little bit hard to see uh, because of my screen resolution. But you're going to notice this uh, you know, HerokuApp.com slash and then there's the the hash symbol. Uh, that immediately tells me something as a web developer, which is that I can expect this application to utilize what we call client-side routing in whatever JavaScript framework that this application is built in. Excuse me if I turn off my phone. The hash symbol can tell the JavaScript framework that it doesn't need to request a new HTML page from the server. In fact, it's just a way to help organize the different pages and components of the web application in a way that is seamless to the user. So you can speed up the navigation for a user as they interact with the application. So we're going to dig into client-side routes here in a moment, but to sort of prove my point, we can also just right-click on the page and say uh, view page source. And we can see here that the server has returned not a lot of HTML code, it's certainly not enough code to build what we see here on the screen. So we immediately know that this application is running a lot of JavaScript. And we'll be able to, uh, to determine quite a bit more about that JavaScript uh, using some other tools here in a moment. But the important thing to remember is modern JavaScript applications are going to significantly modify what HTML is running in the browser at runtime, just not requesting that data from the server. So it makes using a tool like uh, 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 like Burp or uh, OWASP Zap uh, a bit tricky to automate the scanning of an application simply because it can't look at the source code. It has to wait for the user to begin interacting with the HTML that's generated at runtime. Jumping back to the application, we're going to immediately look at a few other pieces of information uh, just to get a baseline for just where to start performing some of our reconnaissance. Um, one of the first places I'm going to look is simply by typing in robots.txt. And if you've ever done any search engine optimization, or any uh, online marketing of any kind, the general idea is that robots.txt is a file that the, the search engine crawlers are going to inspect so that they can more efficiently tag content on your website. Unfortunately, many developers use robots.txt with the, the misunderstanding that search engines are going to, number one, listen to what you tell them, because Google might listen to what's in robots.txt, but that's not to say that any other uh, search engine spiders that exist on the internet are going to respect your wishes. But number two, as a penetration tester, I'm going to immediately come to this robots.txt file and simply look and see what you didn't want me to find. And in this case, you can already see, we don't want the search engine crawlers finding the FTP folder. Well, what do you think the first thing I'm gonna do is it's a penetration tester? 
I'm going to come right here and I'm going to simply visit that FTP folder. And what do you know? I find something visible on the site that I shouldn't have access to. I, I should never have been able to find this. And that's aside from the fact that this probably should have been locked down by the, uh, the webmaster or uh, the server administrator. Um, simply telling me that this site ex or that this page existed by looking at robots.txt is a poor security practice that far too many web developers fall into. So definitely be aware of that. Going back to the home page for uh, the OWASP juice shop, there's a couple of other things that I would immediately do based on my intrinsic knowledge as a web developer. If I right click and I go down to inspect, I'm gonna pull open, in this case, uh, I'm using Chrome developer tools, but every modern browser, including uh, Firefox, uh, Microsoft Edge, uh, Safari, they all have this uh, concept of uh, developer tools. So sometimes you can hit the F12 key and, and pop them open automatically. Here's where we can see uh, on the first tab what my HTML elements are that have been generated at runtime. So if I wanted to start going through and interacting or even modifying this code at runtime, I certainly have the power to do that. In most cases, this isn't going to be all that interesting. More likely, I'm going to look at a tab like my application tab, where it has local storage, where I can inspect any key value pairs that a developer might store. Same thing with session storage or IndexedDB, WebSQL. Um, cookies are more likely to have some information that I would want to know about. And here you can see I've got some sort of uh, encoded value in this cookie called IO. I'm not going to dig into that right now, but these are the very first places I would go to begin looking for information that a developer simply wouldn't want me to know existed. An even better place in my mind is going to be the JavaScript source code itself. Let me close a few of these uh, tabs here. And what we're going to do is to dig into, let's say, main.js. So there's a couple of JavaScript files that exist in here. I'd probably want to inspect each of them more closely as I was doing a penetration test. But if I dig into main.js, the first thing we're going to notice is that there's only one line of code. It's, it's you know an inch deep, but it is a mile wide. Now. That makes it really hard to inspect as somebody who's trying to learn more about the application. What I can do is a pretty print uh, button down here at the, the bottom. If I click that, and this might take a second because there's a lot of code, it's going to expand that one line of code into something hopefully a bit more human readable. You can still see a lot of this code looks like it is uh, compiled down to uh, one letter variable name, so it's not gonna be the easiest thing to digest. Having said that, there are very specific things you can look for when you're looking at compiled JavaScript, because compiled JavaScript is not going to minify things like strings, where you can see you know, WebKit, MOZ for Mozilla, MS for Microsoft, um, obviously module not found. There's all kinds of things that exist in this code that are not minified. And a moment ago, I brought up the concept of our client side routes, things that might exist uh, up here in uh, our URL. So as an example, if I clicked on uh, contact us and went to customer feedback, we're going to see it change my URL to slash contact. Well, if I took the time to come into this window and search, oops, uh, don't show that again, and I want to uh, come in here and search for contact, the odds that that word is going to end up somewhere in a string that might indicate it is a client-side route for an application page is pretty high. And here we go. We already found one 
result for router link. Oops. Uh, I might want to take a closer look at to see if there's anything else on this line. I think specifically on this line, so let's keep going. Ah, here we go. There's a slash contact, a slash search, a slash about. I mean, just for the sake of argument, if I came in here and I hit slash about, again, we're going to find information that exists here. So I might continue to search through the application code and see what other kinds of routes might exist. And oh, so now we have paths. And this is where it starts to get interesting because we have contact. The very first one is administration. So that's probably something I wouldn't have known about. Oops. I wouldn't have known about that if, uh, if not for inspecting the JavaScript. And in this case, it correctly tells me uh, I don't have access to this page. But if we keep looking at some of the items here uh, in, in our JavaScript, we find one that's called scoreboard. Now, normally, I might say that that's not all that interesting. But uh, in the context of this application, the juice shop has a scoreboard that's going to allow us to track our progress hacking through all of the challenges that exist for us to find. And what you'll actually notice uh, as it continues to load here, uh, it's in the background, it has you successfully solve a challenge. You found the scoreboard. This is your first hint. As we continue through the rest of this video series, we're going to look at all of the other challenges that exist here in OWASP Juice Shop and solve them one by one. The scoreboard's not going to exist in real life when you go to hack a web application, but it's good to know different mechanisms you have for finding hidden content. And that's what we're going to focus on in this, uh, in this video series. So then that's where we're going to call it a day for this video. But in an upcoming video, we're going to start digging into each of the individual challenges that exist in the OWASP juice shop. A lot of things around cross-site scripting, SQL injection, broken authentication. As you might expect for a tool that's a product of the OWASP organization, a lot of these challenges are going to focus on your OWASP top 10. So we're going to have a lot of fun in the coming weeks digging into specific challenges. I hope you'll come back and spend some time with me as we hack the juice shop. So thanks for watching and I will find you next time. Thanks.